Hey guys, if you run a home TrueNAS installation and you're probably like me and you care enough about your data to want to make sure to keep it safe, well, safe enough to run TrueNAS at least. And if you do care enough about your data, you're also going to want to make sure that you keep a lot of backups of that data. So remember, TrueNAS itself is not a backup solution. It's a solution for making sure that you've got a place to store and access your data easily and it protects the integrity of the data. But if you lose the physical hardware or just lose enough disks in your installation, then your data is going to be gone and it's going to be, uh, if not impossible to recover, Cover, at least very very expensive to do so so what is the solution to that well anytime that you're taking backups of your data you want to follow the rule of threes so the first one is you have three copies of your data two of those copies can be in an, a local online installation so if you lose one machine you've got another machine in the same location that's storing that data and then the last copy, the one, is your cloud backup solution or your off-site backup solution. Now, if you're like me, you're not fortunate enough to have another house building friend that can uh, afford to run a TrueNAS installation 24-7 for you to just back up your data to. Uh, never mind the cost of running or like purchasing and installing that installation in the first place. So we have to look at a few things like cloud backup solutions. So one of my favorite cloud backup solutions is the ability to back up TrueNAS into an S3 bucket. And we're going to take a look at how you would do that. So the very first thing you're going to need here is you're going to have to have an AWS account with a user uh, account that has programmatic access and access to an S3 bucket. I'm going to presume that you already have this and that's all set up, but uh, we might need to do a, a future video where we get that set up for you in the future. If you do want to see a video on how to do that, please leave a comment in the video um, below. So the very first thing that we're going to do here is when we're on the main page, for our TrueNAS installation, we're going to want to hit the system option here on the left hand side, and then we're going to want to hit the cloud credentials options here. So this is blank. I don't have any current current cloud credentials set up. God said that 10 times fast. Current cloud credentials. Um, so we're going to want to hit the add blue add button here on the top right hand uh, side. So the default here is Amazon S3. There is a couple of other options here, Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, updating to Backblaze, etc, etc. But we're going to use Amazon S3 here. So the name field here, we're just going to put it to S3 backup. And then we've got some authentication options that are required on the, the right hand side. So as I said before, we're going to assume that you've already got an access key and a secret key that you've prepared for this uh, in your S3 uh, or in your AWS account for your S3 uh, bucket, buckets. And I'm just going to post in the one that I've got here as well. Don't worry too much about the fact that you can see that by the time this video is posted, those credentials will have been nuked. So don't worry about that, guys. So then you've got an option here for maximum upload parts. I recommend leaving that blank, but this is actually, if we get down into the, the nitty gritty, the, bolt, the, the nuts and bolts of how S3 works, uh, it actually breaks your data down into parts. And this is kind of controlling how many parts that you can upload at any one time. We don't need to worry about that for our basic backup solution. Uh, if we hit the advanced installation, then it's uh, it gives us a couple of options that we might be interested in. Uh, so I am interested in at least one of them. The option here is to use a an alternate endpoint URL if you don't want it to use the default AWS URLs, but you've got some sort of uh, custom or special or closer endpoint URL, you can paste it here and it will uh, default to using that instead. You'll also need to tick the dis disable endpoint region option if you're going to do that to force it to use your custom endpoint URL here. And then we've got an option here for region. So it'll default to uh, to the one of the US regions, I think, for, for S3. But I'm, I'm in Ireland, and I know that my AWS bucket is in the Dublin hosted region, which is EU West 1. So I'm just going to post in EU West 1 here, and then it'll automatically try to connect to that region instead of trying to connect to uh, one of the US regions as Europeans have to uh, to deal with this uh, sometimes. So then you've got the option here to use Signature version 2. You can ignore that option. That's a, a legacy support option. And if you're setting this back up for the first time, you absolutely won't need to use that. So then we'll be able to hit the option to verify the credential. And we get a nice pop up here that the credential is valid. It's able to connect to my S3 bucket and it's able to, um, to it will in theory be able to upload data to it. I'm just gonna hit the submit button there. And then Chrome's gonna ask me if I wanna keep the password. I don't. And now that we've set up our cloud credentials, we're going to want to actually set up the sync task. The credentials are there to connect to the cloud infrastructure, but we need to set up a sync task to also send information to the cloud backup solution. So here on the left hand side, we're just going to hit the tasks option and then we're going to get the option for cloud sync tasks. So we don't have any cloud sync tasks set up now at the moment, so we can just hit the add button on the top right hand side. And then as always, the very first option we get asked for is the description. So we're just going to put in S3 backup as our description so that we know what this cloud sync is supposed to, to do. It's going to back up to the S3 um, bucket. So then we get an option 
for choosing the source and the destination infrastructure. So you've got two options here. Either your TrueNAS installation can be the source where all the data is copied from, or and, and the S3 bucket will be the destination, or you can have the S3 bucket be the source information and all of the information there pulls uh, into your TrueNAS installation. For us, we want to be backing up data on our TrueNAS installation, but it's really useful to know that you can do that if maybe you've got multiple people who are working on different systems. Maybe you've got another backup TrueNAS solution that you want to pull the information down from the cloud from rather than doing a machine to machine sync. Or maybe you've got some other infrastructure that's also updating the S3 bucket, and that is your main source of truth for your data. Here again, we're backing up the local installation of TrueNAS to S3. So I'm going to turn around here and I'm going to set this as a push configuration. We can see here that the direction, uh, the, the help icon says push sends data to cloud storage, which is exactly what we want. Then we have a couple of options here for transfer mode. So we're going to have copy, sync, and move. Copy allows the information that's on your source data set, so that's our TrueNAS installation here, to be copied up to the S3 bucket, right? So then uh, it's it's just a copy that's made. And then if same if files are made with the same name, then they're overwritten in the destination. So we can be very, very um, confident here that files won't be removed. Even if they're removed on the, the source destination, they'll still exist in the cloud S3 bucket. So that's a useful mode as well, but we've got two other options. We've got our sync option, which means that files on the destination are also changed to match the ones on the source. So instead of a copy where, where the, the uh, S3 bucket just copies all of the information we have and stores it, but doesn't really do any deletes unless you've got a file with the same name, the sync option will also sync deletions. So if a file doesn't exist on the source, um, system, so that's the TrueNAS system, it will also remove it from the cloud S3 storage. That's useful if you're always deleting an awful lot of data and you want to be conscious for your storage. But for a backup solution, I really don't recommend it because one of the reasons that you would have backups is in case you accidentally delete absolutely everything on your installation, or even just a couple of files that you didn't mean to delete and you don't have anywhere else. That's the point of a backup. Um, we also have another option which is our move option. So files are copied from the source to the destination, but then they're deleted on the source uh, installation. So maybe you would have a, a, you would use this as the TrueNAS installation as a temporary storage. You would put something there. You'd expect them to be synced to the cloud, and then it would free up the storage on the TrueNAS installation. Again, personally, that's not something that I would recommend doing because uh, in this version, we're going to use TrueNAS as the main source of truth, and the S3 bucket is going to be the cloud solution. But that's an option that um, that's useful there as well. So we're going to go ahead and choose the copy option. That's my preferred option. And then you get the option to choose what directory you'll be copying from. So I went ahead and I created an S3 upload option here. Uh, that's a test data set option that I've created specifically for this video so that we can put in a uh, piece of data and we can see it go up to the S3 storage. And then you get some options to control a schedule. So again, the frequency with which you do your backups and backup to the cloud infrastructure is going to depend on your installation and be a case by cases. Uh, your mileage may vary kind of situation. I like to do my backups very frequently, so a daily basis is working for me, but maybe you need to do it even more frequently than, like, than that so that you're backing up every hour or every two hours. It really depends on your installation. Maybe you don't need to back up that frequently at all and your data doesn't change very much and you're happy to have a one week uh, backup or one month uh, backup. To be honest with you guys, Back up your data daily at least, right? Uh, then you you know that you're always going to be within 24 hours of your, your last uh, data backup in case the worst happens. Then we get the option to enable the backup. Uh, we're creating this here, so we're going to leave that uh, ticked. We don't necessarily want to uh, not like set up a task that we don't enable. <laughs> Uh, and then we've got a couple of other options here, including taking a snapshot. So before the backup task runs, it'll take a snapshot of the data set. Uh, in my opinion, I've already got some snapshots um, happening on a weekly basis. It's not necessary for one to happen for me uh, on uh, just before a backup solution exists. You'll be able to see my video on snapshots and how to create them in a future video. It'll be released in a, a little while. Uh, and then you've also got the option to follow SIM links. So if you've got a lot of data that's symbolically linked in Windows and other OSs to a piece of data, uh, instead of just trying to upload the SIM link, it'll actually grab the actual data and, and upload it. I don't have any 
real data that uses symlinks, so I don't need to uh, copy this here, but you might. Then you've got a couple of options for prescript and postscript. You can run some custom scripts uh, that can happen either before the backup or after the backup. Maybe you would like, like to do some cleanup or check some file names or format the data in some way. We're not going to do any of that here. You've also got the option to exclude some data types. So maybe you don't want to upload JPEGs, for example, or a specific type of video file or anything named after uh, a format like do not backup or anything like that. that that's also your um, an option for you here. We've also got some advanced remote options. So you've got an option for remote encryption here and file name encryption with uh, encryption password and encryption salts. Uh, I did not set my S3 backup to be encrypted. You should set your S3 backup to be encrypted. That's absolutely something that I would recommend. For the purpose of this video, we didn't do that. So I'm not going to go ahead and try to use the, the file name encryption. Then we've got the option for the transfers. So this is the number of simultaneous file transfers. So here, if you've got limited bandwidth or limited processing power, you can put in a reasonable number of limits so that the, the data is not uh, trying to uh, soak up your bandwidth to, um, to, with uh, too many simultaneous connections or soaking up all of your CPU usage and you're trying to throttle it so that it's at a reasonable percentage. Uh, I don't need to do that. I'm not gonna have an awful lot of bad data to do that. Most home users won't have an awful lot of data to, to actually soak up that connection, but your mileage may vary. It might be something useful for you uh, as well. You can also set a bandwidth limit if you're very concerned about that. But once again, I'm not, so I'm not going to do that. Now, if we scroll right back up to the top on the right hand side with the remote credentials, we have the option to select our credentials. In the drop down menu, we're just going to pick up our S3 credentials that we chose earlier, and then we're going to get the option for our bucket. So when I hit that drop down menu, we can see that uh, I have the option to select my S3 bucket in the EU. I've, I've named this in my AWS account previously, so that's the option I'm going to, to pick. The, uh, the interface then gives you the option to choose the directory in the S3 bucket that you would like to set the uploads for uh, in case you're doing something else with the S3 bucket as well. Uh, I don't, I didn't create a directory for the S3 bucket, so this is just going to be the main directory in S3. S3 doesn't really have directories, it has a, a fairly unique uh, folder structure interface, but for the purpose of this video and not getting too detailed about it, we're going to refer to it as the, the directory. So once we've finally got all of that information, um, collected, we can go scroll down here to the bottom and we can actually hit the dry run button. Uh, and we can see whether or not there's, oop, I should have chosen unchosen remote encryption, my apologies. So we can hit the dry bu run button again and we can see that it's going to test trying to connect to the S3 bucket and test transferring a little bit of data. So we'll just let that uh, job start. We can see that the um, links are going and it was a success. So we can just close that there and then we can submit this option. So then we get back to the cloud sync task and we can see that we've got the sync task created and that it's not run since the last boot. So uh, th that's exactly what we want. We've got the sync task created and it will now run at midnight the next time midnight rolls around. So if I just expand on the arrow here, we can see the details. We can see the schedule is set to run again at midnight and it's gonna do that in nine hours. Uh, I, I actually don't want to wait for midnight. I want to make sure that I've got a backup now. I don't want to risk something for happening in the next uh, nine hours. So we've got a couple of options here that we can uh, choose. So again, we could do a dry run, uh, but we've already done that. We know it's going to connect. So I'm just going to hit the run now option here. And then it's going to ask me if I want to do this cloud sync task. Now I'm going to hit continue. So it's going to go ahead and start that backup task here. And the piece of data that I'll be backing up is one of my videos on snapshots in TrueNAS. So this is the S3 data set that I've created and uh, connected previously. And we're gonna go ahead and see whether or not this video snapshot appears in our S3 bucket. So guys, through the power of YouTube editing, we can go ahead here and see that the backup task has run with a status message of success. And if I click on this icon, it will tell me how much has been transferred and uh, when it completed. You can also choose to download the logs if you want to. And we're gonna go ahead here and, I'm, and uh, take a look at a, our S3 bucket. And we can see here that uh, in our S3 bucket, we've got a copy of the file. So it's completely backed up. Um, that has been a success for us. So guys, thanks for joining us for this video. If I can go ahead and ask you to do the YouTube dance again, which is to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful. That really pushes the channel out to other interested subscribers or YouTubers uh, and would really help me out and I would appreciate it. Otherwise, I will catch you guys on the flip side.